Very good morning to everyone. Thank you. This is an amazing time that we can gather together just to share ideas. I find the environment really encouraging. Yes, according to the MC, I um, by day, you know, I'm part of a F&B uh, business. It's a family business and it's also a heritage company. On the side, I also enjoy music and um, the arts as well. But uh, I'm not here to talk about that because these things are, uh, are, are abstract in itself too. It's uh, different industries. Today, I want to share something that we can all relate to that we can all be a part of as I, as I see the demographic in the audience, you know, we span the, the whole age range. Um, I want to ensure that the talk today and the idea that we are going to share today applies to everyone. So hypothetically, let's just say that before I came on stage, I received a phone call from a friend. So this friend is a humanitarian worker and he's, he's based in Nepal right now as he's you know, providing medical help and humanitarian help in Nepal itself. And so he says that there is a hospital near Kathmandu, so just slightly away, a couple of uh, kilometers away from the epicenter of the, the disastrous earthquake. Um, and there's a hospital there that needs help. The hospital is damaged, but not totally flattened. So there is help, uh, there is room for recovery. However, this, uh, this recovery will take about 305,000 Nepalese rupees. All right? So a quick calculation of 305,000 Nepalese rupees is about um, 22 months salary of an average Nepalese worker. So uh, it's a vast amount, you know, there's no way you can, you can crowdsource in Nepal to get this kind of money. But if you do the exchange rate quickly, it's about 4,000 Singapore dollars. So if it's still fresh in my mind, right, and I come out here and, I, and I want, it's, I'm still thinking about it, if I ask the audience right now, is, is there anyone who, who so valiantly and boldly, you know, say, I will write a check of $4,000, and we can get, get the show going here, we can get recovery on its road, and we can, we can minister to um, hundreds if not thousands of uh, casualties, I think that would be quite hard, right? It would be a tough call because $4,000 is a huge sum of money. You know, it's, it's something where we have bills to pay, right? We have responsibilities, we have, we have kids, we have education, and even more than that, for, for a vast majority of us, it would probably be our monthly income. This entire monthly income is about $4,000. So while I believe that the intention and our heart would want to bring about change that is good and beneficial, the amount will be so daunting that it will, it will be a hindrance to us. However, if I re-angle in such a way that the amount has not changed, the, the, the construction cost, the medical bills is still in the, in the region of 305,000 dollars uh, rupees, but if we each of us on our way out we're, we're willing to, okay, and, and I spoke to the organizers, there's exactly 100 of us here, right? So we do the math quickly. If each of us were to pitch in just a little bit, maybe $40, $45, $30 over dollars, if, if you can all just drop something on the head on the way out, and I can assure you that 100% of the amount will go to my friend who's on the ground, who will then, you know, get construction going and recovery going. I think that's a whole lot more affordable. That's a whole lot more accessible. Um, this does not change the need. The need is still there. The, the costs are still there. However, with 100 people coming together for the same idea, coming together for the same purpose, I think we can bring about a great and lasting change for um, whatever community that we are in. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of 1%. The whole idea that 1% will not mean a lot to us. And, and we can go about our lives and we can continue with, with the purposes that we have and the desires and the passions that we need. However, when we pull together each of us playing a small part, like a magnifying glass, you know, harnessing the, the sunlight and focusing on a point, we can go deep into the community, we can go about and invoke a long-lasting change in the community. Allow me to introduce to you uh, my friend Elias. All right? Elias, um, in this picture, he's already 15 years old. He's a spunky little kid, like, like all 15-year-olds, loves to run around and loves to play soccer and still goes to school and stuff, so he's, he's, a, he's a great kid. I met Elias when he was um, nine years old. Elias is from Ethiopia. He couldn't go to school. Unfortunately, his, his father had passed away, and so he had to go work to provide food for his mother and his uh, grandmother who lives with him. So this was, nine, uh, this was when he was nine, so it's about six years ago. Uh, I first heard about him when I was in university, and it was my role. I volunteered to be uh, the, the dorm leader of, of a wing of guys. So the wing had about 34 guys. Um, it was, it was my duty to kind of rally them together, unite them, you know, give announcements, th things like that. So it's just kind of mundane. But I thought it would be good to have a common project, you know, as we go through the school year, to have a common project that we can uh, leave and say it, we, we, we did something meaningful to society. And so after, you know, some research, I found different organizations that are on the ground in developing countries who build 
medical facilities, who built schools and education uh, uh, facilities. And all it took was a certain amount of money to what we call sponsor a child, right? So what it took was $38, 38 US dollars would sponsor Elias on a three counts. Um, he'll get education, he'll get at least one square me meal a day, which is probably lunch because, you know, breakfast and dinner will be at home. And um, you get he regular health checks, vaccinations, and any kind of medical uh, uh, needs that, that would arise. And especially for Elias's case, actually, the remnant of that money will actually go to the food bill to allu alleviate the, the responsibility of having to work so that he can concentrate on his studies. So, I, like I mentioned, I have 34 guys on my wing, so what we did was every month I would collect a dollar from everyone, and, and those who felt generous would give two dollars, and then together we would, we would uh, sponsor Elias. And it was a wonderful journey. We, we continued to do this project for about two years, and we wrote to him, and he wrote back. And so it was, a, it was a great connection there. And it was time for me to graduate. So I had to graduate, and um, I was, uh, I was, there was no way I was going to leave him on the lurch and you know, stop sponsoring halfway, so I decided to bring him home to Singapore with me. Now, from $1 a month, I suddenly had to, to sponsor him for $38 a month, which is my responsibility now. That was fine. It was, um, it's a tremendous opportunity, and I felt a, a deep connection to that. And, you know, coming back to Singapore, you know, you work, you find work as a graduate, you know, you, about a few years into work, um, your monthly income would kind of hit the, the region of, you know, $3,000 something, $4,000. Um, and then it struck me. It struck me that if I was getting $4,000 a month, 1% of 4000 is about $38 or $40, right? It barely made a difference to my lifestyle. I was still able to save. I was still able to um, uh, put towards my bills. I was still able to plan and, 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 and enjoy the Singaporean lifestyle, middle-class lifestyle. But at $38, it meant a world of difference to him. He was able to get education. He was able to get food, medical bills. He, his life expectancy and his, his health, his standard of living would improve. But most importantly, he would be able to break out of the cycle of poverty. And I say this humbly, but if, if we did not meet or, or he had to go on this path, he would probably be working, you know, continue to work, grow, grow, grow up, you know, and just tend to fuse. And, and this is a common story in a lot of developing countries. And the cycle would just continue. But um, in 1% of my income, very small amount, made no difference to me, it really broke him out of the, the cycle of poverty. And there are thousands, if not millions of children who go through this as well. So that's just, that's just me and that's just him, right? So what if, what if classes, companies or friends group together who pledge or who to, to gather together and say, let's all put in a small amount, right? It can, and one percent can go from a school child right, and his little allowance all the way to an adult, to a company, to a business. But if, if everyone put together their minds towards putting aside something small, but dedicating the amount to a common project, a change will, will happen. And let's just change gears here a little bit because uh, I, I wanted to, f um, I want to show you quickly how, when we put our minds together, what we can do, what difference we can make. All right, so if I can find 10 people, 10 people who are willing to dedicate you know, an average of $40, again, okay? So this, the number is $40 because um, I checked the Ministry of Manpower median, median scale of income is actually 3770 So let's just take $40 for an example. If 10 people are willing to pledge together, we'll get $400. $400 is able to train, is enough, is, is the amount that we need to train 100 youth in India to gain job skills. And then they can go on to the city to work earn a living and start a career. So this is just one month of 10 people. If we can find 100 people, we will get about $4,000. And $4,000 is able to build water tanks in Indonesia that will, that will provide um, clean distilled water tank, uh, water, fresh water to, to the families there. And it will impact 3,000 people. So this is 100 people at $40 each for one month. Right? Imagine if we can find 1,000 people for 12 months on years, we, we can change the world. We can change communities from the ground up. We can impact them. We can improve their lives. And the change will be vast. But 1%, the power of 1% is, goes beyond just money. Right? It goes beyond just money. It goes into space and it goes into time as well. Um, one of my favorite passions is uh, music. And so as I go about uh, uh, performing for concerts and, and playing, I feel that music is a free gift that we can give to everyone. However, 
there's only a selected few who can enjoy the gift, unfortunately because of cost, because of, of um, uh, fees and things like that. So I did a, re a quick research. The Esplanade sits about 1,970 seats. You know, you go, there are some halls that are bigger, maybe um, uh, Sydney Opera House and et cetera, et cetera, right? So let's just take the average of maybe 2,000 seats. So at 1% of the concert hall, which is 20 seats, and we're not talking even the, the best row, right? We're not talking about the best. It can be the nosebleed seats or the fillers after, you know, people don't show up and stuff like that. At 20 seats, if there are 40, it's a 40-week season, and, you know, they perform on Saturday and Sunday. So if the concert hall were to pledge or to donate 20 seats every concert, we will get a number of 1,600 children, underprivileged either by financial or by physical means, who are able to enjoy a concert. See, 1,600 seats is not going to really change a huge amount across a whole season, across a whole year. But you have implanted a, a gift or a passion into the minds of these little children who will remember forever the experience they had in a vast concert hall with, a, with vast music. Why am I so passionate about children and fighting poverty and reaching out to them? I look at this audience, and I'm sure among, ourselves, among us, there are many who, who play a musical instrument, or you, can, you, know, you do some art, or you can run or swim very fast, or faster than me. You know? So we have talent and gift in our midst, for sure. I, I'm very confident about that. A talent or a gift is something that, with a little nurturing, it will blossom and blossom faster than other people. And I believe that God is fair in give, distributing gifts around the world. However, in developing countries, there will be children who are gifted with gifts or talents, but have lost the opportunity to nurture them because they spend their time either working, um, finding food, or, or just you know, fighting for survival. And it is, it is the first level where, we, where I find that if I rally people to sponsor, to provide basic necessities, someday, who knows, we may nurture the gifts, their, their talents, that they can then give back to their own society, um, whether it be through the arts, through education, through business, and, and this cycle continues of giving back and rebuilding so that we do not see a child go hungry at all. Besides, besides money and space, there is one last um, power of 1% that maybe can apply to all of us as well, which is the power of time. If we dedicate 1% of our day to doing something worthwhile, something different, something, not, uh, something unusual, over three months, over six months, we can actually do something new. So whether it be you know, learning the guitar, or, or learning 10, words, 10 new words of a language a day, or learning a new craft, through consistency and through um, dedication, if we dedicated you know, a little bit of time, over time we will actually accomplish something because it adds up and it, it really builds to that. And I think I've driven home my point that I think we all grasp the idea that something so small and something so consistent uh, will bring about full change and com full and complete change in our society. So it, what it really leaves me is to just show you quickly what 1% of our day really looks like. There are 24 hours in our day and 60 minutes, so that's about 1,440 minutes in a day. So 1% is about 14 over minutes. And if we dedicate this 14 minutes to doing something different, something new, our lives will be changed. And likewise today, I thank you that you have given me 1% of your time. So thank you very much, everyone.